7.30 p.m. Hello, I'm Mateli Edwards on News 5 tonight. Singapore singles out new growth areas for tourism. Southeast Asia can actually be the next Mediterranean. Japan readies its defences against a North Korean rocket launch as China calls for calm. The UN chief says in Singapore... This is a clear violation of Security Council resolution. A mock leadership election in Hong Kong. I feel sad that we have no real democracy. But it attracts attention, including that of hackers who have disrupted the polls. And Singapore athletes score a huge sponsorship deal ahead of the Olympics. The Singapore government is targeting new areas of growth for the tourism sector. This comes as the tourism board says it expects up to a 10% increase in visitor arrivals this year to about 13.5 to 14.5 million. That means a rise in tourism receipts as well to about $24 billion. All this emerged from the annual tourism industry conference today. Singapore's tourism industry has done well in the past two years, but STB wants to focus on growing Singapore's share of the tourism pie by increasing the amount visitors spend. And to do so, the government will pump $640 million to seed new tourism projects over five years. Three new areas of growth were also identified. For one, building up the cruise tourism, starting with the opening of the new international cruise terminal later this year. Southeast Asia as a whole region is really interesting for cruising because of the many islands that form the archipelago of Indonesia as well as Philippines and of course, you know, the, the wonderful coastlines, the long wonderful coastlines of our neighbours like Malaysia, Vietnam, Thailand and we think that Southeast Asia can actually be the, mix, the next Mediterranean when it comes to cruising. Now, the government said that another area for good growth potential is the arts and entertainment sector. So in the next phase of development, it's looking forward to co-creating and anchoring new signature content like music and arts festivals to draw even more visitors to Singapore. And finally, growing the travel agent industry. This means local travel agents with established outbound businesses will be given more help to grow inbound traffic. The two integrated resorts have also contributed to increased visitor arrivals. And to help casino operators extend their international reach, Singapore's Casino Regulatory Authority awarded junket licenses to two Malaysian operators on Thursday. Twelve applications were rejected. I think that should give all of us a measure of the way CRA intends to go about this uh, process. Um, I think in general, uh, if there's any indication of uh, non-compliance or any other kinds of potential problems, then clearly the persons or the entity would not be eligible uh, for the license. In addition, there are some, you know, it's a one-year license. There are several safeguards built into it and there will be ongoing monitoring. And to help companies deal with the challenging domestic environment, the government will channel $265 million to help companies increase their capabilities and workers' productivity. In world news, Japan is preparing its missile defense systems ahead of a planned rocket launch by North Korea next month. Tokyo says it may shoot down the rocket if it looks like it will land on Japanese soil or in Japanese waters. The last time Pyongyang launched a rocket in 2009, it flew over Japan. The Japanese defense minister says he has ordered officials to prepare to deploy missile-carrying warships. Tokyo is also continuing to call for North Korea to cancel the launch. China, meantime, is urging calm and restraint on all sides. North Korea says the mid-April launch is to put a satellite into orbit. But the U.S. and its allies see it as a pretext for a long-range missile test. Well, United Nations Chief Ban Ki-moon says North Korea's planned satellite launch is a clear violation of Security Council resolutions. He spoke at the inaugural IISS Fullerton Lecture here in Singapore. The South Korean nuclear envoy and his Japanese counterpart going into diplomatic overdrive ahead of next week's leaders level nuclear security summit in Seoul. Security analysts say North Korea is likely to top the agenda following Pyongyang's announcement that it will launch a satellite on a long-range rocket in mid-April. 
It has prompted UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon to issue a firm warning. I'm very troubled and very deeply concerned uh, by the announcement of Democratic People's Republic of Korea to launch a so-called application satellite next month. This is a clear violation of Security Council resolution, particularly 1874, which prohibits any launch using the ballistic missile uh, technology. Such an act would undermine recent positive diplomatic uh, progress and in its effect on international donors would likely worsen the humanitarian situation inside the country. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has raised concerns about the developments in North Korea. Aside from meetings with the Americans, Chinese and the Russians, he's on his way to Seoul and will have bilateral meetings with the South Korean leadership. High on the agenda, how to get the North Koreans back to the negotiating table. In other headlines, a mock election has been held in Hong Kong two days before the real decision to choose the territory's next leader. It's meant to be an accurate gauge of public opinion that could have an impact on the actual vote in which ordinary citizens don't get a say. But polling has been extended to tomorrow after hackers disrupted the online voting system. A Hong Kong correspondent, Leslie Tang, has more. I'm at one of 15 polling stations across the city in which citizens can cast their vote to say who they think should be Hong Kong's next leader. Now participants here can vote for candidates Lern Chen Ying, Henry Tang, Albert Ho, or cast a blank ballot. As Hong Kong has yet to realize full democracy, regular members of the public cannot vote in Sunday's chief executive election. Instead, a nearly 1,200 strong election committee dominated by pro-Beijing business elite will choose Hong Kong's next leader. Now participants here originally had the option of voting online using either their smartphones or computers, but organizers today announced their website has been compromised. They say hackers attacked their online system to prevent voting. So now they're encouraging members of the public to come and vote in person and have extended polling until tomorrow. This has been dubbed a civil referendum organized by the University of Hong Kong's public opinion program. And participants here say they're voting to highlight what they call a small circle election. I feel very sad because um, it should be our right to vote for our uh, chief executive. But right now, um, we are unable to do that. So in order to um, um, make it as a way of demonstration, this is uh, one of the um, channels that we can do. As a developed region like Hong Kong, I feel sad that we have no real democracy here. So we have to do this kind of action to uh, express our feelings. Organizers hope the results will influence how the election committee votes on Sunday, with tens of thousands of people expected to take part in this simulated ballot. So it'll be interesting to see how the People's Choice stacks up with the real election results on March 25th. Leslie Tang, Chow News Asia, Hong Kong. A Chinese national who allegedly hijacked a taxi and caused a fatal crash at Singapore's budget terminal has been slapped with three more charges. 30-year-old Yuan Zhenghua was charged in court today with dangerous driving, causing death, driving without a valid license and driving a cab without a valid insurance policy. He had previously been charged with causing hurt to a city cab driver by punching and strangling him while trying to steal the vehicle. He later crashed the taxi into a cleaner at the budget terminal, killing him. Yuan now faces up to five years in jail on the charge of dangerous driving causing death. He could be fined and jailed for several months on the other two charges filed today. The first quarterly review of public bus services this year shows that those on 22 routes have shown improvement. The improvements include adding more trips, a total of 180 a week by the two operators, SBS Transit and SMRT, as well as deploying buses with a higher capacity to areas with heavy ridership. In some cases, empty buses were sent to mid-route bus stops, which were severely overcrowded. Two designs have been shortlisted for a makeover of the subordinate courts. One showcases lush green landscaping and the other features a green building. The courts are to get a new look and a new tower which will house the criminal courts. The existing building will be refurbished and will house the civil, family and juvenile courts. Construction will start next year and should be finished by 2019. Time for a break but coming up on News 5... The searches have uncovered hundreds of thousands of images. 
Police smashed a child porn ring in Australia. Some victims are said to be mere infants. And more young people here at risk of tuberculosis from as early as their teenage years. Welcome back. In more World new report, News reports, Australian police have smashed a child pornography network, arresting more than a dozen men in raids across the country. They say the ring was international, originating in Germany. And the crackdown followed a tip-off from Interpol. Even the police were shocked at what they found. Hundreds of thousands of images and videos de depicting child sexual abuse with some victims being still within their infant stage of life. The men arrested were aged 21 to 64. They allegedly downloaded the exploitative images through a file-sharing network. The police searched properties in the states of Victoria, Queensland and New South Wales. They seized pornographic material from computer hard drives, laptops, mobile phones and portable storage devices. U.S. officials have revealed charges against the American soldier accused of a murderous rampage in Afghanistan. Staff Sergeant Robert Bales faces 17 counts of murder. Earlier, 16 civilians were reported killed, nine of them children. The discrepancy in the numbers hasn't been explained. Bales will also be charged with attempted murder and assault. He allegedly opened fire on villages in Kandahar nearly two weeks ago. The 38-year-old military veteran could face the death penalty. Afghans have renewed calls for him to face a public trial in their country. The Prime Minister of France says authorities had no grounds to detain a self-professed Al-Qaeda militant before he went on a killing spree. Officials are facing questions as to how the known extremist managed to shoot a dead seven people in three separate attacks and how he got hold of so many weapons while apparently living on a small welfare allowance. Questions are being asked as to why this elite unit could not take a lone gunman alive after a 32-hour siege and why French intelligence did not preempt his killing spree despite knowing he had extremist views. Uh, le fait d'appartenir à une organisation salafiste n'est pas en soi uh, un délit. Uh, il faut pas mélanger le fondamentalisme religieux et le terrorisme. Uh, non, il n'y avait aucun élément permettant uh, de uh, d'appréhender uh, Mohamed Merah. Et encore une fois, on n'a pas le droit, on n'a pas le droit dans un pays comme le nôtre de surveiller en permanence et sans décision de justice euh, quelqu'un qui euh, n'a pas commis euh, de euh, délit. Oh, regardez ça au taquet But Mohamed Mera was on America's no-fly list and was banned from boarding flights to or from the US. He himself claimed to have been trained by Al-Qaeda in Waziristan. And he showed his experience with handling weapons when Kamau stormed his apartment and cornered him in the park. Quand elles ont euh, voulu pénétrer, euh, qu'il était à l'intérieur de la baignoire, le fait de se cacher dans une baignoire dont on sait qu'elle euh, euh, protège des tirs et elle protège des explosions, montre que même si c'était un jeune atypique, c'était en même temps un professionnel du terrorisme. Mohamed Mera died from a gunshot to the head as he tried to scramble out of a ground floor window. Authorities have recovered the gunman's video recordings of his own attacks. Euh, films qui sont euh, extrêmement explicites que nous avons eu l'occasion de visionner hier dans lesquels effectivement on le voit euh, au cours de son rendez-vous avec le, le, le vendeur de moto s'enquérir de sa qualité de militaire et puis l'abattre de deux balles tout en lui disant tu tues mes frères je te tue on le voit aussi effectivement abattre les militaires à Montauban euh, dans une scène euh, extrêmement violente et s'enfuir en volant de son scooter au cri de Allah Akbar et on le voit enfin euh, commettre sa, sa tuerie sur le, les lieux de, de l'école juive de, de Toulouse lundi matin. Investigators are trying to determine whether Mohamed Mera had accomplices. Police have also extended the detention of his mother, his elder brother Abdul Kader and his brother's girlfriend. Police say Abdul Kader too is an extremist and have found traces of what could be an explosive material in his car. Tomorrow is World Tuberculosis Day and here in Singapore, the health ministry says there was a slight increase in TB cases last year. Meantime, the number of multi-drug resistant cases doubled from 2010 and experts say younger people may be at risk. 
The Health Ministry reported 1,533 new cases of TB in 2011, compared to just 1,478 the year before. Experts in TB say many factors contribute to this, such as an aging population, increased migration into Singapore and delaying diagnosis. And while older males make up the majority of the new TB cases, there are concerns the younger population may be at risk of getting multi-drug resistant TB. That's tuberculosis that is resistant to the two most powerful anti-TB drugs. Three or four cases are young people. A 19-year-old boy, a 20-something-year-old girl, 30-something-year-old man. Whereas previous to that, in the earlier years when we had multi-drug resistant TB, they tended to be more than 45 years old who had travelled and lived in areas with where we think they got their multi-drug resistant TB. So the fact that these young people in the past two, three years with multi-drug resistant TB without ever, ever had TB before, first time TB and straight away bad kind of TB, could possibly mean that there's transmission already of this kind of drug resistant TB in Singapore. And that's a, not a very good sign. There were also 158 cases of relapse last year. Professor Wang says the most common reason for relapse is when the first infection is not properly treated. And patients need to be disciplined to take medication regularly. Now, in light of the increase in the number of TB cases in recent years, the Health Ministry is reviewing the Singapore TB Elimination Program, or STEP. The program is directed at early identification of the source of the TB case and effectively interrupting its transmission. The ministry also advises those with symptoms such as a prolonged cough or fever to seek medical attention as soon as possible. Next, uh, first at this year's JobsDB.com Career Fair. Part-time work is on offer in response to the government's recent announcement that it's tightening the supply of foreign workers. Part-time work is the buzzword at this career exhibition. Job seekers can also apply for it on JobsDB.com's job portal. One thing that we're introducing this year, which, uh, which is new and perhaps uh, an opportunity for job seekers, is part-time or flexi-time work. I think we have to be more innovative to uh, investigate these type of options. Mr Chung also said employers can potentially tap on mothers for part-time work. However, many job seekers told Channel News Asia that they were only considering full-time positions. Part-time, usually they'll ask me to work in the evenings. So. I want to work in the daytime, evening, I have to be with my kids, so I'm looking for a full-time job. One employer said he's hoping to hire more housewives and mature workers because they are often more reliable than younger workers. This year's exhibition features more than 8,000 job openings, a 20% increase from last year. 40% of this year's exhibitors are small and medium enterprises. In business news just ahead, Singapore's inflation rate dips but upward pressure on prices remains high. Plus, another beautiful bloom named after visiting VIPs. Welcome back. In business news, Singapore's inflation rate eased to 4.6% last month from a year ago. It was 4.8% in January, but the central bank warns that prices will likely remain elevated for the first half of this year. That's because tighter foreign labour rules will push up costs, particularly in the service industry. Rising oil prices will also add to the cost burden for companies. Water company High Flux is partnering Japan's Hitachi and Itochu Corp to develop a seawater desalination plant in India. The project will cost some $760 million. The consortium will design, build and operate the desalination plant in Gujarat for 30 years. The plant will be able to process nearly 340,000 cubic meters of water a day. And here are the market numbers.
Singapore National Olympic Council has snared its biggest sponsorship deal ever, what we understand to be a seven-figure sum. The five-year partnership is with Singtel, which declined to disclose the actual figure. For a start, the money will go towards supporting athletes for this year's London Olympics, including swimmer Tao Li and shooter Jasmine Sir. The initiative will be later extended to more athletes and more events. It's just not about the Olympic Games. Uh, we're just very lucky that the timing is right. So um, these athletes will have got all the support they, they need, but uh, we'll see what we can do for them to give them a little push yeah, to see whether they cross the finish line. As it is a long-term five-year deal, Singtel is hoping that besides the London Olympics, greater support is also extended to upcoming events like the Sea Games, Asian and Commonwealth Games. Now, some news just in. Singapore's Prime Minister has pledged that the country will continue to support the priorities of the United Nations, such as sustainable development. He spoke at a dinner for UN Chief Ban Ki-moon tonight. Through the UN, small states like Singapore have a voice in international affairs and have access to the rule of law and the rule of international law and an orderly, rules-based international environment. And that's why Singapore has always supported the United Nations strongly. Let us continue to draw strength from one another, from knowing that regardless of size, we multiply our power when we work together. That is the power of solidarity. And the leaders follow that with a toast using new water. And the UN Secretary General got a uniquely Singaporean honour earlier today when an orchid was named for him and his wife. The purple beauty is called Vanda Van Ki-moon, you soon take after the couple. Mr Van was visibly delighted and even took notes on the hybrid species. Singapore has often said it with flowers when welcoming visiting dignitaries. There are some 200 orchids named after VIPs and their spouses at the National Orchid Garden. And that's News 5 tonight. Good night.